How to Write a Tax-Efficient Will by Deborah Bowers, Chapter 3, Single, No Kids, and Broke. In Chapter 1, I introduced you to Jane. Jane represents the single male or female with no kids who wishes to write a will. At the time we first join her, she has a job at the local supermarket and lives with mum and dad and her cat Felix. Jane lives from day to day, giving little thought to a pension, old age or savings. She has little or no savings. Her bank account shows a balance of £1,000. Her sister Annie left home five years ago and is married with two lovely boys whom she adores. One day, Jane gets chatting with her friend Emma who has lost family to COVID-19. Emma's family had not made any inheritance tax, death, or estate planning, leaving the remaining family in a position where they are now trying to figure it all out. This really unsettles Jane, who becomes determined to put her affairs in order should the unexpected happen. As Jane starts thinking about her will, She decides to leave everything to her mom and dad. They are the most important people in her life and have been there for her at every stage of her life. Then it dawns on her, what if mom and dad go before me? This thought troubles Jane. She realizes that it is best to make provision in her will right now should her mom and dad pass before her. Her parents are much older than her. They are more vulnerable to the virus than she is, and they do have underlying medical conditions. She thinks long and hard about it and decides to benefit her sister Annie and her two adorable nephews should the unthinkable happen and her mom and dad pass before her. A few days later, Jane runs into Emma again and tells her all about her plans to write her will. Emma tells Jane that she really does not see the need as she is only worth £1,000 right now and her personal items such as her clothes may be worth less or about the same. Emma understands that her words may hurt Jane and come across as insensitive but as friends, they have sworn to be honest to each other. Further, Emma informs Jane that from her research, if your estate is worth £5,000 or less, there really is nothing to worry about as such matters can be dealt with under the rules governing small estates. Emma advises Jane to look it up, telling her, that most banks and building societies would be happy to close an account with less than £5,000 in it once provided with a death certificate by the next of kin. Jane knows that her estate will qualify as a small estate as she only has £1,000 in the bank and nothing more of value. She promises Emma that she will think about her advice. On the way home from her meeting with Emma, Jane stops by the news agent and plays the lotto. Jane feels lucky and believes that one day she will win big. Jane also thinks to herself, what if my parents were to pass and leave me an inheritance? She recalls the story of the members of the family who were all ill with COVID-19 at the same time and passed within days of each other. This makes her realize that her circumstances could change at any time. Jane decided to write a will as a precaution, reasoning that she does not know the day of her passing and how her circumstances may change. She knows that it would help her feel less anxious If she had a will, the will would identify who she would want her assets to go to in the event that she inherits any property from her parents 
or a long forgotten relative. In her will, she would be able to identify who she would like to benefit should she also become a victim of the virus. Jane does not need to worry about inheritance tax right now, as she is well within her nail rate band, which is a tax-free allowance at death. Everyone who dies in 2021 is entitled to a nil rate band of £325,000 before they become eligible to pay the 40% inheritance tax. She is, however, worried about her cat Felix and decides to make provision for him in her will. She also wants her family to be aware of the type of funeral she would like. In the United Kingdom, organ donation has become an automatic opt-in, so it is not necessary to address this in her will. If she wanted to opt out, Emma had told her that all she had to do was go on to www.gov.uk website, search organ donation, and follow the instructions to opt out. With all of the above in mind, Jane sets out writing her will. Last Will and Testament I, Jane Doe, of 59 Orchard Park, Longview, London, OL4, 2WX, being of sound mind, make this will as my last will and testament. I hereby revoke all former wills, codicils, and other testamentary instruments made by me, this will applies to all my property located in England and Wales. I appoint as executors and trustees of this my will, my parents, Richard Doe, my father, and Priscilla Doe, my mother, both of 59 Orchard Park, Longview, London, OL4, 2WX. Should one or both of my parents be unwilling or unable to act, I appoint the survivor of them who is able and willing to act as sole executor and trustee of this my will. In the event that both or neither of my parents are willing or able to act as my executors and trustees, at the time of my death, I appoint my sister Annie Doe Blackwell of 40 Sunset Boulevard, London, SW1, 5RJ, as sole executrix and trustee of this my will, and in the event that she is unable to act, I appoint my cousin Lacey Brown of 50 Acre Close, London SW5, 4LJ, as executrix of this my will. Should all of the aforementioned executors and trustees predecease me, and John Blackwell has attained the age of majority, I appoint my nephews Jake and John Blackwell of 40 Sunset Boulevard, London SW1, 5RJ, as co-executors and trustees or the survivor of them. I direct that all my just debts and funeral expenses be paid as soon as conveniently possible after my death. I give, devise, and bequeath all of my estate to my parents in equal shares, namely to my father Richard Doe of 59 Orchard Park, Longview, London, OL4, 2WX, and my mother Priscilla Doe, both of the same address. In the event that one of my parents should predecease me, I give all of my estate to the surviving parent. In the event that both my parents should predecease me, I give all of my estate to my sister, Annie Doe Blackwell of 40 Sunset Boulevard, 40 SW1, 5RJ. Should my sister Annie predecease me, I give, devise, and bequeath all of my estate in equal shares per stupids to my two nephews, the sons of my sister Annie Jo Blackwell, namely Jake and John Blackwell, both of 40 Sunset Boulevard, London SW1 5RJ. In the event that I should predecease my cat Felix, I Annie predecease me and my cat Felix, I give Felix the cat 
to Jake Blackwell of 40 Sunset Boulevard, London, SW15RJ. I wish to be cremated. The residue of my estate I give to the registered charity Cat Lives Matter, charity number 2019-2020, whose registered address is 148 Hatton Cross, London, SW12HL. As witness my hand, this date, day of month, 2021. Signature of person whose will it is. Signed by the testator in our presence and attested by us in the presence of the testator and each other. Witness 1, name, occupation, address, signature. Witness 2, name, occupation, address, signature. Jane now feels lighter. She knows that she has accounted for just about every eventuality. She feels assured that if things were to take an unexpected turn and all the family was to pass in the same event, the charity Cat Lives Matter would benefit from her estate. She checked its status with the Charities Commission and confirmed that it is a registered charity. Some days later, Jane meets Emma and shows her the will. Emma asks Jane why she stated in her will that she would appoint Jake and John as co-executors and trustees when they would only be able to act together when John reached his majority, in other words, turned 18. Jane explained that in the event that Jake and John needed to act as her executors, it would mean that all other executors had predeceased or were unwilling or unable to act. She wanted the two boys to act together since they were the ultimate beneficiaries and by acting together, they would be able to support each other and come into the inheritance at the same time. She did not want Jake to be in charge of what belongs to John only because he was already 18 and John was not. She felt that by ensuring that they could only act together when John was 18, as he was the younger of the two, that would enable John to have a say as executor and trustees in a, and trustee in how the estate was managed. This would reduce conflict between the two lads. Emma also wanted to know what posturpies means. Jane explained that she had found out that if Jake or John were to pass leaving behind children, the gift would pass to their children. The use of the phrase made it possible for her to benefit the next generation. Her stirpies could be thought of as a magic term. It could be used when a parent gives a gift to a child and also wants to benefit any grandchildren or any children her child may have should the child pass leaving behind children. Emma tells Jane that it really is not a great idea to leave substantial amounts to her parents as that property is only likely to be passed down again to the children on the passing of the parents. However, as the amount in question is so small, namely Jane's £1,000 in her bank account, it would really not impact the financial position of her parents. Emma advises Jane to keep her will under review. Things to consider. If you are single with no children, your nil rate ban is £325,000. You will pay 40% inheritance tax on anything above this that does not qualify for its own exemption. If you are a single mom or dad with a family home, your nil red ban is £325,000. You are also entitled to a residential nil red ban of £175,000 
if you are passing your family home to your child or children. Your allowance will be half a million pounds. You will pay 40% inheritance tax on any amount above this which does not fall within an exemption. If you are single with less than £5,000 in assets like Jane, you may not need a will and your estate could be dealt with as a small estate. There will be no inheritance tax to pay.